Hi everyone, it's your girl Tamari, the Astro Fashionista. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't, please subscribe below. Um, press the bell icon for notifications and give this video a thumbs up. Um, today I'm going to be giving you our May 2019 horoscopes and I cannot believe it's already May, you guys. I feel like this year just started. Um, but this is going to be a pretty decent month. It's going to be a good time to get things done. We have the sun in Taurus. So, so first let's go over the general astrological forecast for all 12 signs. So what do you guys think about my new astrological wheel? Um, this was purchased from a woman called Ksenia Moore. She's an astrolada um, astrologer. I will link her information, Astrolada's information down below. Um, she hand makes these, I believe. Um, and I thought it would be the perfect thing for my monthly horoscope. So hope this helps you guys understand the astrology a little bit more. Um, so first let's talk about what's going on generally for all the 12 signs. So um, starting with May 1st. So the sun is currently in Taurus. And whenever the sun is in Taurus, um, it, Taurus is the first earth sign of the zodiac. It's my zodiac sign. My birthday was um, actually April 22nd, um, but it's not about me. So Taurus is all about being steadfast, stable, um, luxury loving, um, all about the five senses, being in touch with touch, feel, taste, sight. Um, it's a very sensual sign. And when the sun is there, we're all feeling a little bit more in tune with those parts of ourselves. Um, so that is a big thing for the month, of course. Um, but on May 1st, we have um, Mercury in Aries. So we have Mercury here. This little guy is here in Aries. And Mars is actually in Gemini down here. And Mercury is the communication planet. I think a lot of you guys are familiar with Mercury retrograde. Um, so Mercury is actually making a positive aspect to Mars and Gemini because those two signs are sextile on May 1st. That's a great day to put um, action behind ideas. The only thing is that Mercury is also squaring. Um, it's making a square to Saturn, which is up here in Capricorn. So even if you do have a new idea that's, um, that you want to work on, it's going to take a lot of hard work because of that Saturn influence. So just make sure that you're ready for the task. Um, on May 2nd, we have Mercury again making a positive aspect to Jupiter. Jupiter is in his home sign Sagittarius and Jupiter expands everything. It's the biggest planet on here. My sun got all messed up, so that's why the sun looks so small. Um, but Jupiter expands everything that it touches and Mercury making a positive aspect to Jupiter, again, reinforces the whole idea of it doing something on a big scale, having a big idea, bringing something new um, into fruition that's going to take a lot of hard work. But remember, Jupiter is retrograde. Um, so whatever is started right now might take a little bit longer. You might have to redo things over and over again um, until you get it right with Jupiter retrograde. And then we also have on May 2nd, the same day, Mercury squaring Pluto. So again, even though there's a positive aspect, there's also a more difficult one. Um, that's a day that we should all watch what we say, watch our words, because whatever we say that day, we can't take back. So just I'm giving you a little bit of caution there. On May 4th, we have a Taurus new moon. The moon is down here in Taurus. And new moons are all about new beginnings, fresh starts. Um really making your dreams come true if you have dreams, uh, wiping the slate clean and just starting fresh. Um, this Taurus new moon happens when the moon is actually making a positive aspect to Neptune um, in Pisces, its home sign um, right here. So um, th that's considered a sextile. And so that's going to be a day that is good for putting actions behind your dreams because Pisces is a sign all about dreams. Neptune's is all about making things dreamy and um, being harmonious. And with the new moon there, um, it really could be a foundation for bringing your, your dreams to fruition. And then on the second week of May, we have um, on May 6th, we have Mercury entering Taurus. So Mercury's here. It then moves down here into Taurus. Um, the moon is going to be moving because the moon moves every two and a half days. Um, it's not going to be completely accurate all the time. But um, when the Mercury is in Taurus, 
Mercury in Aries was very fiery energy. It was very direct energy saying things before you maybe think about them. Taurus is probably the opposite. Um, Mercury and Taurus is very being very methodical about the things you say, thinking before you speak, maybe speaking a little slower so we'll all be feeling a little more calm, which I think is great after this fiery Aries energy. Um, so Mercury will be there. And then on May 8th, Mercury is going to conjunct with Uranus. So as you can see, we have these two big planets here. Well, this is the sun. Um, Uranus is here. Uranus is in Taurus for the next seven years, which is a huge deal. Um, Mercury is going to sit right next to Uranus on um, May 8th. And that can bring an idea out of the whim for some of us. Mercury is all about change. I mean, Mercury is about communication, but Uranus is all about unexpected change, inspiration, um, just things moving pretty swiftly and out of the blue. So when Mercury is there, it can mean just a new idea, but it can also mean saying things uh, just off the fly and not really thinking them through. Um, it won't be too, I'm not too worried since Mercury is in Taurus, but just a little bit of caution. Um, don't tell you, don't say that and warn you. <laughs> and then on uh, that same day, May 8th, we still have Sun making a, harmon a harmonious aspect to Neptune. The Sun's here. Again, Neptune's here. Um, so again, uh, that's going to be a great day for like creative pursuits, um, being artsy, um, being in harmony, just really having just a nice, pleasant time because Taurus loves to be pleasant and so does Pisces. And when Pisces is in Neptune, it's at home where it's going to be for a very, very long time. So that's a, just a nice, harmonious time. On May 9th, we have um, Venus in Aries. So Venus, the love planet right here is in Aries. And um, that's going to be making a positive aspect to Jupiter and Sagittarius up here. These are two fire signs. It's what's called a trine. Um, that is actually um, a really good day to be feeling good. You're feeling optimistic. Uh, but watch out for being a little bit too optimistic because at the same time, it's making that harmonious aspect. It's making a hard aspect to Pluto in, Capri in um, Capricorn, um, which is, you can see Pluto is up here. So um, although it'll be feeling, will be feeling good for the most part, um, because Venus is a benefic planet, Jupiter is a benefic planet, um, that square to Pluto, Pluto is a very powerful planet, very intense. Um, is just causing, I mean, there's going to be a lot of passion probably that day, but just watch out um, for having passion with like the wrong person or something like that. Then on May 11th, we have Sun making a positive aspect to Saturn in Capricorn. Um, the Sun is here, Capricorn is here, um, and Saturn's here for a while. Um, Capricorn and Taurus are considered trying each other. That's a positive aspect in astrology. That's an excellent day for um, getting things done because Taurus likes to work hard. Capricorn likes to work hard. The sun, which is all about our vitality and Saturn, which is all about hard work or in harmony. So it's a great time to like get things done. Um, so really use that energy. On May 13th, um, after the sun makes that positive aspect to Saturn, it's going to make a positive aspect to Pluto and Capricorn. That's another day for getting things done to really transform things. Um, putting personal power behind um, or putting action behind something, using your personal power. Um, great day for that. On May 14th, we have Venus and Aries uh, making a positive aspect to Mars and Gemini. Um, that is actually... Um, that is a really passionate day, actually. Not passionate as if it, if those two planets were in like maybe a water sign, but anytime Mars and um, Venus the uh, hook up, it's it's like fireworks. And Venus is all about love, and Mars is about action and passion. So those two being in harmony can make it a really passionate day, even though it's it's in a fire and an air sign. It might be you might be connecting with someone on maybe an intellectual level. May 15th, we have Venus actually moving into Taurus. And this is great news because uh, uh, Venus actually rules Taurus. So it's at home in Taurus. And it's all about, you know, feeling good, um, embracing your luxury life or your, your, your luxurious side of life. 
um, pampering yourself, being creative. Um, it's really good for finances since Taurus rules money. It's a really good place for, for Venus to be. So that's on May 15th. On that same day, Mercury is actually making a positive aspect to Neptune and Pisces. So again, feeling very dreamy and, and romantic. Um, a lot of us are going to be feeling that way. But then Mars is going to enter Cancer, um, which is not the best placement for Mars because it's considered to be in detriment there um, because Mars is exalted, which exalted means like on another level, um, a grand level in Capricorn and Cancer is opposite Capricorn. So it's considered to be in detriment when it moves there. It's not terrible, but just something we might be feeling like a little bit of a slowdown um, because Mars is all about action and vitality and Cancer kind of takes its time to, to get things done. So um, there's a little bit of a slowdown there. May 21st, the sun is actually going to enter Gemini. And now it's a social time. This is a time of the year for us to kind of connect, um, form new friendships, talk, go out, connect with people, um, maybe do some short trips or things like that. Um, I'm just going to move this here so it's more spotlight on Gemini. Um, so the sun will be there. Um, great time for socializing. And then um, Mercury also enters Gemini that same day. And... Mercury rules Gemini. It uh, rules Gemini and Virgo. So it loves to be at home in Gemini. So this is really going to be more of a social time for everyone, um, especially if you are a Gemini or maybe another air sign. Okay. And then on May 29th, Mercury is actually going to square Neptune and Pisces. Uh, Mercury, again, is about communication, ideas. Neptune is all about um, disillusionment. It dissolves things. It, it can cause a little confusion. Yes, it makes things more hyper creative but it also is not great for um with things that are not solidified so this is not a great day to make decisions may 29th i would wait until this transit is over because we're not all feeling very we're not feeling so clear then on may 31st we have venus in taurus venus is here um making a positive aspect to Saturn and Capricorn. Um, this is a beautiful day for like um, art project. Um, it's a good day for money because Saturn is all about structure and laying a foundation. So if you've been being careful with your money, you could see maybe a payoff there. Um, it's a good time to maybe make an investment if you're thinking of doing that. It's a good time to solidify solidify a romantic relationship because Saturn likes to add structure to things and Venus is, does rule romance. So that's a beautiful day as well. Okay, so now keep watching for um, more information about your sign in particular. Happy May, Aquarius. Um, I can't believe it's already May. Um, this month is going to be starting with you thinking about finances. Um... I wouldn't say Aquarius is the most, you know, money hungry sign. You guys are very philosophical and, and intellectual, um, but you are going to be thinking a lot about money. Um, the first couple days of the month, we have um, Mercury making a positive aspect with Gemini. Mercury's in your second house of income. It's making a positive aspect to Mars and Gemini in your third house of communication. Maybe you're talking about making more money with someone. Maybe you have an idea to... Um, do something that involves communication and you want to profit on it, whether it's starting a blog or a YouTube channel or writing a book. Um, there's just, there might be some ideas percolating for you on how to make more money during that time. Then on May 4th, we have a new moon in uh, Taurus in your fourth house of home. Any that tells me that you might be thinking about making changes to your home, you might be thinking of buying real estate, you might be thinking of moving. Um, if not, it could relate to something happening with your family, a new, um, something new happening within your family life, whether it's your, your, um, your parents or, or your children or something like that. And then on May 9th, we have Venus and Aries in, um, Venus is in your third house again. Um, it's making a positive aspect to, um, Sagittarius, Jupiter and Sagittarius, which rules your 11th house. 
Um, this is actually a really great social day for you, Aquarius. Um, you are an air sign. You love to connect with people, but you're you're also very to yourself at times. But this is good networking energy. So I would take advantage of this around that date for like the next couple of days because there are a couple of transits that are hitting those areas of your life. Then on May 15th, we have Venus entering into Taurus in your fourth house. Again, emphasizing the whole need for changing up your home. It could be this is a great time for renovations, good time to do some new decor. And we know you're a centric sign Aquarius, so maybe it's something different you've been wanting to do to your home. Now's a good time to do it. Um, on May 18th, we have a full moon in Scorpio happening in your 10th house of, sir, of um, reputation and your career. Something's happening there. Maybe you're getting a promotion. Maybe you're being recognized for something. Maybe you're thinking of changing careers. That would be a big one. Um, but let me know. I want to hear in the comments if something happens in regards to your career around that time. Then on May 21st, we have the sun entering into Gemini. It's going to be entering into your fifth house of romance. We're also going to have uh, Mercury is going to end up moving there too after it moves into Taurus. Um, Mars is going to move into Cancer. Um, this is putting the highlight and emphasis on children, creativity, um, romance. I mean, I wouldn't say Aquarius is the most romantic sign, but you're romantic in your own way. Um, your idea of romance is something different than what probably everybody else thinks. So whatever that is, do you boo? Um, on May 29th, um, Mercury in Gemini is actually making um, a not so positive aspect to um, Neptune in Pisces here, which rules your second house. Not a good day for financial matters, important financial decisions. Um, just try to hold off anything financial related on that day. Just hold off on making that choice or decision. Uh, and then at the end of the month, we have Venus and Taurus um, home in its own sign, making a positive aspect to Capricorn in your 12th house. You're just going to be feeling really content I would say it's probably the feeling that you have like maybe at ease with yourself maybe at ease when your home life maybe you had moved by that time maybe you have decorated by that time but overall you'll be feeling like just very har harmony is all I, I have to say so um yeah I hope this was helpful for you um look forward to seeing you next month and leave me a comment below thank you